Hello and welcome to this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. We are going to take a look at creating these semi-metal, semi-gel, glossy icons slash buttons. How's that for a name? We're going to learn how to create these here in Adobe Illustrator. And it's actually pretty easy to do. This is what we're going to be creating though. Just to give you kind of a visual. Come here to File, hit New. We're going to start from an absolute new blank document. Size we're going to use is going to be 640 by 480 and that's a preset size. We're going to be using RGB color and obviously it's going to be in landscape orientation with sizes like that. Alright, here's our document. The first thing we need to do is grab the ellipse tool and get rid of the border and we can just set the foreground color to black for the time being and just click out on the stage. We want to be very specific about the sizes that we're creating our ellipse here because we want the ellipse to sort of look like it's set back almost laying down a little bit. So the size we're going to be using is 240 by 220. That's the size whoops, of, whoops, of the ellipse we're going to be using. Just drag it to the rough center of the artboard. All right, we're going to copy that ellipse by going edit, copy, and then we're going to paste it in back. So we're going to go edit, paste in back, and all we're going to do is kind of stretch it out a little bit. So I'm just going to pull it down like that. Maybe a little bit more. Just like that. And I'm going to change the color of this to a lighter gray just for the time being, just so we can see how we're looking here. And it looks like we need to stretch it out sideward a little bit more. This is the ellipse in back that I'm stretching out. So I'm going to select the center anchor point and I'm going to hold down my Alt key. If I'm on the Mac, that is the Option key. And I'm just going to click and drag it out just a little bit. I mean, just a very tiny bit. Okay, just so it looks like it's smoothly running into our button. All right, so the first thing we need to do is start to apply some gradients to this to make it look metal. Select the top ellipse here, the black one, and select the black to white gradient here in your swatches palette. If the swatches palette's not open, go window, swatches. So do that and then grab the gradient palette. The gradient palette is also located up under the window menu. And we need to make this look like metal. So the first thing we're going to do is put it on an angle. That usually works nicely. Say 45 degrees for our angle. And let's do some color changes here. For this, let's try using four colors. All right, just like that. We're going to start over here from the left-hand side. And I like to use my color palette and just select percentages of gray. The closer to white you are, the lower the percentage is, the higher the percentage, the closer to black you're going to be, black being 100%, 0% being white. Okay, so let's try using a very light gray, something like 5 or 6 to start us off, 5 or 6%. Go to the second one, and let's select a medium gray, something around 50%, maybe 40 to 50%, something more like that. And then select the third handle, and let's make this one completely white. And select the last handle, and we will make this, let's try a light gray again, something around 15 maybe, maybe a little touch darker, like that. That looks pretty good. So that's starting to look like metal there on the top. Let's select the ellipse in the back now, and we're going to apply a gradient to this. So let's just click this, swatch here in the gradient palette. All right, we've just filled it with the gradient we just used. We're going to use a slightly different gradient here. First off, the angle is going to be 25. And the gradient is going to have six handles here. I'm just adding handles by just clicking where I want a handle. Okay, so we now have six handles. Just trying to space them somewhat evenly, just evenly to the eye. I'm not going to go and precisely position them all. That's not really necessary. All right, and here we're going to start out, let's try a 65% gray and uh, a 30% gray. By the way, I have all these numbers written down if you're wondering how I'm just coming up with these numbers. So that's a 65% gray, a 30% gray, and then a solid white here. These are just common metal gradients that I like to use. And let's try a 70% gray there to give us kind of a little dark effect there. And then a 15% gray. And let's put another dark one in over here. And 
70%. Okay, so we've got the top and the side of our button or icon or whatever here. Let's select this ellipse in the back and let's apply a dark gray stroke to it. So I've got this medium to dark gray stroke here. I'm just going to click and drag and drop it on my stroke uh, area here in the toolbar. I go over to the stroke palette, which is located under the window menu. Make sure the weight is set to one point. That's what I want. Select the ellipse on top and we're going to give this a white stroke. Drag that out and we're going to set the weight to half a point. All right, so we've got a white stroke going around that and a dark gray stroke going around our ellipse in the back. Now let's select this ellipse on top, copy it, edit copy or command and control C, and then paste it in place or in Illustrator, just pasting it in front when there's nothing, you know, if you're just pasting right in front, but also paste it in place. So that's generally what I use the paste in front command here for. Just pasting in place. And you can see, we just pasted that in front. And we're going to hold in the shift key and just make this a little bit smaller. I'm going to fill it with white, by the way, so you can see it. And then I'm going to move it so it's just touching the top of the circle and then coming down into the circle, just like that. All right. And then we're going to lower the transparency or the opacity uh, that's in the transparency palette. Let's try 25. Maybe 30. That looks pretty good. 30 looks pretty good. All right, let's create a new ellipse. Just click anywhere. And now our original ellipse was 240 by 220, I believe. Let's make this one 215 by 195. Hit OK. And drag this to not quite the center of our button here. We want it to be further away from this side of the button than the top. Okay, this again, if you know how perspective works, as things get away from you, they appear to be smaller. So we're basically drawing this optical illusion so it looks like it's getting smaller at the top, which it is, and it's going to give you, it's going to make you feel like you're looking at something that is 3D, which is exactly the effect that we're trying to achieve. So just make sure that's closer, much closer to the top than it is the bottom here, and roughly centered in between the two sides of sides are not nearly as picky about that. So we need to fill this ellipse with a radial gradient. The radial gradient we have over here is this black to white radial gradient. But we'll just select the regular white to black linear gradient because we can switch that in the gradient palette. If you just go type, hit radial. And there we go. Same exact thing that we would have gotten. All right, I'm going to select the white gradient slider or gradient anchor point and I'm going to give it this light green. Okay. Now you can see what just happened was I filled my entire shape with light green. That's because in order to actually change colors on gradients, you have to either edit the color up here in the color picker or drag something out of your swatches palette and drop it onto the gradient color stop. So I'm going to select this green and I'm just going to drop it. You can see a little diamond appears inside of the color stop white and there we go. It is now light green. I'm going to grab this dark green and drop it over black. It's a little too desaturated. I'm going to grab the brighter light green, and that too is a little desaturated. So I'm going to use my color picker. I'm going to go out to Hue Saturation Brightness. That's HSB. And you can see it's kind of no brainer here. Jack the saturation up. Make sure we get solid green in the hue section. And we can make it a little brighter if we want. I actually just want to make it a little darker. And there we go. We've got a nice green. And while we're at it, we'll check to make sure we've got the bright green here, which we do. Okay. Let's grab the gradient tool now, and we're going to redraw this gradient. I'm just going to select to the bottom right-hand corner of our center anchor point. I'm just going to pull it away. So we've got a gradient that looks kind of like that. That actually isn't quite what I wanted. Let's try something more like that. That's pretty good. Let's bring the anchor point a little further. Something more like that. That's, that's perfect. Just like that. So just draw it until you've got sort of this entire bottom corner has the soft light green look and it just kind of fades to darker green everywhere else. It's exactly what we want. Now what we want to do is apply an inner glow. Come up here to effect and go stylize inner glow. Now the inner glow we want, yeah, the mode is normal. The color is just a dark green. Okay. Come down here to a green in your color hue slider and just grab one of these darker greens. It's not a huge deal. Hit preview, by the way, so you can see what we're doing. And we're going to blur it 8. 
So hit tab and that'll switch you to your next thing here in your menu so you can see the updated inner glow inner glow excuse me and that pretty well looks like what I want I'm gonna give it a slightly darker green that looks perfect I'm going to hit OK now and you can see we've got a nice inner glow there for our ellipse let's draw another ellipse sort of a smaller oval right here right in the bottom left hand or bottom right hand corner excuse me of our gel area of this metal button and we're gonna fill it just with solid bright green come up here to effect go blur Gaussian blur and we're giving it a Gaussian blur of, let's try five to start things off hit OK five isn't quite enough so undo by hitting command or control Z or you can go edit undo go back to effect select Gaussian blur Brings up the Gaussian Blur dialog box. By the way, I did not hit Apply Gaussian Blur. That would have just applied the same exact Gaussian Blur. I want to have a completely new blur. Let's try 10. 10 is much better. See how we get this blurred green shape? Just kind of set it in there and go to Transparency and select Overlay. All right. You can actually move it out so the green kind of affects a little bit of the metal, the edge of the metal a little bit. That might look nice. Okay, so there that part of it is. Let's add a shine. Let's create a new layer here. The reason we're going to put the shine on a new layer is because any content we put in this button, like that question mark I had in the other one, I want that to appear underneath the shine. So I would have to create a layer between this layer one, which we'll call button, and this layer two, which we will call shine. So the button content would have to come in between these two layers. Let's come on to the shine layer for now. Select the pen tool and set the foreground color to white. I'm just going to drag white out of the swatches palette and drop it over there in the fill square. And I'm just going to draw a nice curve just like that. And then I'm just going to finish the shape off. Don't worry about those edges. We're going to mask it off in just a minute. Hit V, which will give you your selection tool. Select it and come over here to your button layer and select this path which is the metal okay it is this metal I should have to shine this top layer here that first layer that we gave that metal gradient to copy that going edit copy close that up select the shine layer actually select the shine layer by hitting that little circle Double click, we're in the transparency palette, double click the open space next to the thumbnail, and now go Command or Control F. Okay? So we've just placed, pasted, excuse me, that gradient in place. And that gradient actually is going to give us a nice little variation to our shine. So we're going to select the layer thumbnail, not the opacity thumbnail now. We're going to select that layer thumbnail, and we're going to reduce the opacity to something, let's try 50. Eh, I don't really like 50, there's not quite enough shine let's try 75 75 looks really good let's stick with 75 all right now we can actually lock that shine layer up open up the button layer and select the absolute last sub layer which is this path right here it's this path that is showing the sides of our little button to this uh, ellipse we're going to add a drop shadow come up here to effect and go stylize drop shadow now the drop shadow we're going to apply to this is actually exactly what I have here. It's going to be the normal mode. Opacity is going to be at 35%. The X offset will be 1. The Y offset will be 4. Because remember, the reason our Y offset is going to be 4, which is going to move the drop shadow down, is because we don't want this shadow to be appearing up at the top of the button. That just would not look realistic at all. Because if you're looking at it from this angle, you're not going to see anything near the base of the button over at that end. We're going to blur it about 3 pixels and hit OK and you can see we have this nice button here um, I'm not going to get into adding the question mark although I will just quickly show you how to put it in okay let's select this entire layer I'm gonna go edit copy go click on window and select my untitled and I'm gonna create a new layer so we've got this layer here in the center and I'm gonna go command or control B to paste that right in there and I'm gonna nudge this whole thing up to about the center and you can see that our shine is not masked to the question mark. So we can just quickly grab the question mark, copy that, go up to the path layer, double click. Oops, I'm going to control F to paste that in place. And there we go. We've quickly masked that off, masked 
that off, excuse me. And there we go, we have our finished button and you can see that our content is underneath the shine here. And that's how you create this kind of button here in Adobe Illustrator. It's really quick, really easy, and they make a really nice icon or some some sort of uh, decorative button for your website or for some project you're working on. So that's it. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed creating this. And please go check out the site. That is www.tutvid.com.